Let me give you one example of how compensation patterns can affect even the top players in the world. Let's use Bubba Watson as an example. When Bubba Watson won the Masters in 2014, his golf swing speed was about 124 miles an hour. In 2022, his swing speed dropped to 116 miles an hour. How did that happen? You guessed it. It happened the exact same way that it happens to every golfer that cannot make a controlled power move safely and consistently. When you learn the five steps to build the controlled power move in your golf swing, you will be able to systematically restore a better body turn, you'll increase power, distance, and accuracy, and it won't matter what your age or your skill level is. So let's learn the five components of a controlled power move. Step one, head control. At the end of the day, the head controls the body, which makes it the first step. Head posture and neck mobility have a powerful effect on ball striking. This is because the balance center in the brain is constantly monitoring where the head is in relation to the body. In order to maintain balance and not fall, the brain always wants to keep the head level with the horizon. Our eyes, ears, nose, and even our jaw send input to the balance center in the brain. Where the compensation pattern develop is when there is bad posture. After working with clients, athletes, and patients for the last 34 years, I can safely say that 90% or more of people have bad posture in their head and neck. In other words, most people already have poor head control and a major compensation pattern before they even pick up the golf club. When you clear the compensation patterns at the head, you'll add the control back into your control power move. Step number two, shoulder turn. The shoulder turn in the golf swing is like the transmission in your car. It transfers the power that's generated from the core and delivers that power into the golf ball for distance and accuracy. The most important part of an effective shoulder turn is the mobility and responsiveness of that area right between your shoulder blades, also known as the thoracic spine or T-spine for short. When the T-spine is out of alignment, it becomes stiff and that creates a compensation pattern in your shoulder turn. A restricted T-spine is one of the major causes of compensation pattern number three. For every degree that the T-spine cannot extend and rotate, the body has to compensate by using the arms and hands to swing the golf club. When you restore and improve movement in the T-spine, you will increase golf swing speed in two to four weeks. Step three, swing plane. Maintaining a proper golf swing plane and the ability to hold the angle of attack without coming up or going down is critical for hitting consistent golf shots. If your swing plane is too high, you'll hit thin shots. If it's too low, you'll hit it fat. Both of these problems are from compensation patterns at the spine and hips, specifically the hamstring muscles. If you have any hope of maintaining consistency in your swing plane, your hamstrings must be balanced and responsive. You don't have to be a yoga expert or contortionist, but your hamstrings must have a minimal level of intelligence in order to do its part in making a controlled power move. This is because the hamstrings affect both the upper body and the lower body. If they are tight, it will cause you to come out of your stance and hit thin shots. If they are weak, you'll leak power on your downswing because of lack of stability. By incorporating drills that improve the resiliency and elasticity in your hamstrings and then integrating that newfound movement back into your golf swing is how you regain and build your controlled power move. Step four, the hip coil. As the famous pop singer Shakira says, the hips don't lie. The ability to have intelligent, mobile, strong, and resilient hips is the hallmark of an efficient athlete. This quality applies to the golf swing as well. This is something that I learned right from the beginning of my golf performance consulting career. I had the opportunity to learn from top PGA pro Jim McLean, and 
his X Factor concept is where he teaches that if we can have the right amount of rotation between the shoulder turn and hip turn, you can maximize the use of the body's powerhouse. This puts you in the best position to make your best controlled power move. Steps one through three, prepare your body to perform your best hip coil. The three areas that control your hip coil are hip flexors, hip rotators, and adductors or your inner thigh muscles. If these muscles are tight, weak, out of balance, or uncoordinated, you'll develop compensation patterns in your golf swing. When you get this area flexible and strong, you'll literally release the parking brake on your distance and power because you'll be able to access the power that's already hidden inside of your golf swing. Step number five, mobility and body control. Mobility and body control takes all of the concepts from head control, shoulder turn, swing plane, and hip coil and combines them to work in your golf swing. Mobility and body control will also help create good muscle memory so you can get rid of or prevent compensation patterns. It will also help you warm up before you play golf so you start strong and don't lose shots because you're still cold. Mobility and body control will also help you maintain joint health so you reduce your risk of getting injured. These are the steps that must be taken to build a controlled power move inside of your golf swing.